Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Coaching Angel Show. My name is Angel and I am your host. I am a certified transformational life coach and it is really a true pleasure to have the opportunity to meet with wonderful guests from all over the world who are so gifted in the area of personal development and self-help. Today, I have someone that I've had a recent opportunity to get familiar with on my own interview for the Transformation TV Network. And her name is Kim O'Neill, and I'm thrilled to have her here today. She's handling all the interviews of all the coaches on the network, and she's a terrific gal with a warm heart and absolutely somebody you're going to enjoy learning all about. So without further ado, I want to welcome you, Kim. It's your show. Welcome to the Coaching Angel Show. Oh, thank you so much, Angel. That was a really wonderful introduction. I appreciate that. It's my pleasure. You know, before we get really actually into the deep dive of more about you and what you do in the world, I want to just give a little brief bio on who you are, a little background for the people that have never heard of you, and just to bring them up to speed. So Kim O'Neill is the inspirational host of the Every Day is a New Day show. She's also a two times best-selling author of two books. One, You Are Loved, An Inspired Meditative Visual Journey, and then Positive Minded People, which is also a bestseller. So she's really somebody who's very diversified. Aside from being a heart-centered transformational coach, she's an interview confidence coach. And you'll learn more about what that exactly is as we go further. She's a Reiki master and a former crime analyst. In addition to helping job seekers and prospective podcast guests prepare for interviews, she also helps people rebuild and regain their confidence after they've been on a spiritual or healing journey. Ultimately, Kim loves to empower people in embracing who they truly are so they can move forward. I will say absolutely 100%, this is so spot on to who you are. And in addition to this, you are such a warm and inviting soul to speak with. So again, a very warm welcome to you for being here on the show with me today. Thank you, Angel. I love what I do and I love connecting with people like you as well and getting to share my story and share other people's stories because I really think that, you know, none of us are on this journey alone. And what a, what a great thing to realize that we can all be here for each other in service to each other. And I think a lot of it stems from our own journeys and how we help each other heal. So yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes, absolutely. And I'm on that same path with you. You and I are very aligned in, in being very heart centered in the work that we do to help people to develop their confidence and their belief in what they can accomplish in their life. And so it's, it's interesting. I relate so much to you in so many ways. So tell my audience, if you will, because they may not know much about you up until right now. Who is Kim O'Neill? I, so here's what I just first want to say. I love this question and that you're asking it because a lot of times uh, I know in the past myself and other people, we tend to answer this with what we do. But who we are is not the same as what we do. So who am I? I am a passionate, purpose-driven, inner peace, loving, quirky soul. I'm like I said, I'm here on this journey and, and grateful for what I do as well, but that's who I am. As you said to me on our own interview together, you're really so much more than that. You really yes. are. Awesome. You, you oh, thank so you. diversified and you have so many gifts and talents. And that's why I really wanted you to be a guest um, on my show. So in that, again, people might not know what a confidence coach is. What exactly, if you could give us an idea, would be what your work really is in the world? What do you specialize in? What does that look like? Regardless of if someone comes to me to prepare for an employment interview, a podcast interview, maybe they're looking to you know, reclaim their identity after going through a healing or spiritual journey. Ultimately, a lot of it comes down to knowing who you are and really being rooted in that and allowing the, the past hurts and frustrations and angers and all that stuff to, to slough off, you know, and to be released and learn to surrender to life and learning how to be in that flow and aligned with who you are so you can move forward right. with whatever that thing is that you're moving towards. Mm. Yeah. Does that help answer the question? <laughs> I, think you, I think you actually did very well as a matter of fact. Yeah. 
here's the thing is for a lot of people, I know it boils down to confidence. So that's what I say. But to me, confidence is not just a surface level thing. It oftentimes is a self-worth thing. And so that's something that um, I haven't been speaking directly to lately, um, but is really what starts to get developed within the coaching sessions with my clients is they develop this own sense of knowing their own value as they get clear on who they are and being good with that, not needing external people or situations to determine who they are and their worth, knowing that it comes from the inside out. I think that's similar in a way to what I teach with my codependency work, you know, having people really become aware of fully who they are without anything or anyone around them and really plugging into their self-worth. So I think yeah. it's so important to help people with confidence. I really do. And not a lot of people have that initially and many need support. So what what would be, for instance, a client's uh, story that might bring them to see someone like you? You know what, they're all different stories. Uh, one that comes to mind right now is there was once one client who came to me saying that she wanted help with decluttering her home. And this is the first time I had someone come to me with this particular situation. I said, okay, sounds great. Let's work on that. Um, as we moved through our sessions and she was doing, she was doing the work, you know, she was, she was allowing herself to um, process through the sessions, do her, our, her work between the sessions, decluttering her home. And as anybody who's making those changes and shifts, we got to a much deeper issue. It was all about healing from um, physical abuse that she'd experienced as a child, from family issues that she had. And so those started to come to the surface, you know, shine a light on them and really create the space for her to heal and be able to release those so she's not carrying them forward in her life. They come to you if they're struggling with like depression and they're really just feeling like they're stuck in their hurts. Or would it be somebody who might be a professional who's just looking to bolster their self-confidence? Absolutely, all of the above. Yeah, so that's one situation. For a professional who's wanting to be more confident at work. Maybe they're getting promoted and they realize they actually, they want to feel like they've deserved that position. They want to stand confidently in that. Absolutely, that is, that's a client that I work with. It all started with many years ago, I was doing my own inner, inner research and going, you know, going within, asking myself, what do I love to do? What am I good at? What do I have a lot of experience with? And I realized two things. I realized that I really wanted to help people build their confidence and I have a lot of experience with interviews. So I started with that and client after client, what I noticed the pattern often was is that a lot of people are not willing to claim their strengths and really connect to who they are and own that so they can confidently you know, present themselves in an interview. And so it became so much more than just an interview. It became about, oh my gosh, are you carrying that around with you throughout your daily life? And as I grew in my own coaching skills and certifications and all this stuff, I realized, okay, this goes beyond interviews. I help, I can help people with just their daily, you know, lived experience of feeling confident and grounded and loved and worthy of whatever it is the life that they want to create an experience for themselves. So I still today help people with interviews, but I help people with so much more than that. And, and oftentimes it's a resonance that connects the two of us. And uh, I love what I do. And it can start with one thing and then roll right into another. Absolutely. Very much um, like the work that I do as well. People come yeah. for one particular thing that they need and once that's been resolved, then they move into another area of work to just keep on up leveling their life and becoming the best version of themselves, you know? Yes, yep. So, uh, much like me, you know, I wrote a best selling book as well this past year called An Angel's Journey Breakdowns to Breakthroughs. It is a memoir book, so it is factual. And what I'd like to know is if you could share a little bit about the two books you wrote. Um, were they connected to a hero's journey that you went through in your life or? Just tell us a little bit about the books. Yeah, definitely. So they were both co-authored experiences. And by the way, congratulations on yours, because I know writing is a huge process and it's never just about the writing itself. It's takes someone on an inner journey. Mm -hmm. 
So, so my, the first book that I co-authored, I wrote a chapter in a book called Positive Minded People, Inspiring Stories of Overcoming Adversity for Living a More Positive Life. And my chapter is called Intuition. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. And the basis of it absolutely is uh, what I've learned is my personal hero's journey. And that was really learning to overcome and heal from having an absent father. And there was a time in my life where I, I didn't accept that I had even been affected or impacted by my dad not being around. And as I got older and older, I realized, oh, yes, I was. As I saw how that was showing up in other relationships in my life. So it definitely was a journey that spanned many years and um, I'm so grateful for it. He passed away and when I, when I was in my early 20s. And when he passed away, um, that was really kind of a very pivotal time for all of this because we were just at a place in our lives where we were starting to reconnect and rebuild our connection. And um, he finally said he apologized for not being there and was making some new promises. And then he died and, or we could say transitioned. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we ever actually die. Um, and that was so pivotal because all of a sudden, all of this unresolved anger and rage and sadness. Uh, I, had knew, I knew it was there before, but I really knew it when he passed away. Mm -hmm. And I had to shift something within me in order to be able to move beyond that moment. So at that time, you know, I decided, okay, look, your, your physical body has, has, is no longer here but we are going to continue to repair our relationship. And that's when I completely shifted my view on death. And I, anyway, I share, I share more about it in the, the book, but it took me on this healing journey that was just really wonderful and ultimately took me within and um, helped me develop more self-love through healing from that. That's fantastic. <laughs> that must have been quite an experience at the end of his life. He must have felt that feeling like so close, but yet so far away, you know, and after all the all the waiting and wondering and everything you probably experienced. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really, uh, that, that's just a heartwarming story. So what, now that was the first thing that you wrote as an author. The second was a book that you wrote or also was it a collaborative uh, experience? It absolutely was a collaborative experience. So yes, so two years later, which was just in 2019, I ended up co-authoring a book called You Are Loved, An Inspired Meditative Visual Journey. And it's more of an experiential book. And what I actually love is um, just going back to the first book, meditation was one of the very first things that I started to, to do and experience as a form of healing through you know, my, my situation with my dad. And so what I love is that the second book actually supports people who are also just starting to connect with meditation. And so I tend to, some people think this is cheesy, but I'll say it anyway. I tend to think of it as meditation done differently because a lot of times we think of meditation, um, there's so many different ways you could do it, but I think kind of the standard way is people think, okay, you're going to close your eyes and ohm and you know, maybe you listen to something or maybe you don't. And there are all these misconceptions about what it is that keep some people away from, from trying it out, from seeing if it could be something that could help bring them some inner peace and healing. And so what's fantastic about this book is that my co-author is actually an amazing photographer. And so it's got, I think it's around 39 of her images from Key West, Florida that are absolutely stunning. And it's paired up with a written guided meditation that I wrote um, and so much effort was put into really making sure that this book was aligned and flows and really helps the reader or viewer to be able to connect within as they look at these amazing images. So, so yeah, that's the second book. I would love to see that. I'm going to absolutely check that out because that book sounds amazing. I would love, especially that area. And I know how beautiful it can be to take the photographs. So that would be something to check out. Um, of all the things that you've been through on your journey to date, what would you say the greatest lesson is that you've learned along the way? First is absolutely the healing from the absent father situation. But even beyond that, you know, really a lot of it has been 
knowing how to move forward amidst the unknown. I have always felt like this passionate, purpose-driven person. And for many years, I, I thought I knew what that was going to look like professionally for me. I've also been very career-driven. So I thought, you know, okay, I, I have this vision of what this is going to look like for me. And as life has happened and, you know, you get some curveballs and some redirects and detours and you get to that space and you're thinking, wait a second, this isn't panning out how I thought it was supposed to. So being with that knowing of, okay, I, I really want to fulfill my life purpose and help other people and, and, and thinking, you know, what that's going to look like and then realizing, uh, uh, it's there's, there's, you know, no, you don't know how it's all going to look. And so learning how to surrender and say, okay, I'm still on this journey. Guide me. Please show me the way. And being in that space of the flow and the surrender and allowing and knowing when to take action, you know, connecting with your intuition and all of that. To me, that has been a big part of my journey. And uh, I'm grateful for it. I'm still on the journey, but it's it's interesting to see how it's unfolded. And so that's, that's the other piece for me that comes up when I think of hero's journey and what's been a huge lesson is learning how to be in that space and not give up, keep moving forward. Like my book says, you're always stronger than your circumstances. It's always about just really hanging on. And you know, every day in my world, it's all about praying for God's will and the power to carry that out. And that in even the recovery work that I do with my clients, because that is one of my specialties, it's so important that every morning, you know, you get up and turn it over and just yes. don't feel like you're really the one that's running the show because you're not. And in that moment of surrender, you know, all you need really is the strength to just go inside and listen and be directed, you know, by that small voice within that we all have, you know, some of us are more tuned into it than others, but we absolutely all have that. So in the next few years, do you have a special goal that you're trying to achieve in your life? One thing I would absolutely love, and I'll, I'll go ahead and say this here on your show, is I absolutely love hosting. I've been hosting my own podcast and live show for getting close to five years now, and I absolutely love it. So when I think of a goal for me, I would absolutely love to host an international adventure show that also has this component where it supports people in in moving forward with their life but also knowing how amazing they are and being connected to that you know to to their own self-worth so um you know i i don't fully know what that would look like but that just sounds so amazing and fun to me and that is a vision i'm holding for myself i think you could do interview work on television or in any any venue for that matter. I think you really have a great presence and um, a real self-assurance and confidence that is absolutely transmitted, 100%. It really Thank is. Thank you, Angel. I appreciate that. So I think I reached out to you briefly about this second book I'm working on. On It's called Why Not Me, Why Not Now? And it really picks up where the first one left off, but it focuses on the topics of attachment and letting go. And I like to ask my guests if they could speak a little bit about how that might have impacted their life or even currently is impacting your life. Attachment and letting go, where is that taking you in your life? And, and has it been in, in any respect an unmanageable place that it's taken you to? Or have you been able to navigate both of those things? Oh, all of the above, Angel. <laughs> All of the above. I I first want to say what an excellent topic for you to be writing a book on. So I look forward to reading that when it comes out. And mm, good, woo, that is so needed for there to be more resources and support for people, because I actually think that a lot of us are are having experiences about learning how to have healthy attachments, mm -hmm. learning how to be in that space of flow and not necessarily needing, again, outside people or situations to change for them to be able to accomplish whatever it is that they want, you know, for the individual to be able to accomplish whatever they need to accomplish in their life first. So absolutely, you know, my experience with this started with having an absent father and, and 
not being aware of how that had impacted me and then seeing the pattern show up you know in, in different relationships i had um you know different boyfriends i, I was married and divorced i i had a, a friend that um i didn't know it at the time but as i was was healing from no longer having a certain friendship in my life realizing that also was teaching me about unhealthy and healthy attachments and I like to think that I have learned a great deal and have learned how to have much healthier attachments today. But something that did recently happen, you know, since you asked, something that did recently happen is I actually experienced it from the flip side. I had someone in my life who had a very unhealthy attachment with me. And so I really feel today that I've been able to experience what it's like to, to be in that space of wanting other people to be something that they were never meant to be in the first place and having someone else wanting me to be something that um you know was more than what was meant for our connection as well and this is where to me it all comes back to and we've already started to say this but it all comes back to knowing how to love yourself first before ultimately you know be before anybody can ever love us the way that we want to be loved we have to love ourselves first. We have to know what that feels like. What does that look like? You know, when you're having a bad day, how can you bring yourself back to, you know, feeling centered and grounded in who you are and allow other people to be who they are? Absolutely. You know, Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. <laughs> I yes. think those are pretty potent words. And I think it is all about just really coming to a complete awareness of, of what you're all about. and and not trying to stuff people, places and things inside of you to get out of yourself so you don't feel your feelings and instead work on clearing the emotional baggage and really having a healthy life, learning how to set healthy boundaries and important enough, letting go. Letting go is a huge, huge thing that so many people don't know how to do, even when it's time and they know that it's time to let go, they struggle. So it should be a very interesting book. I'm at work. It will be my second book that should come out in less than two years. And it's collaborative as well. I have included other um, coaches around the globe and I've had them do some writing for me on their view on attachment and letting go. So we'll see. Uh, but it's, it's a fun project for sure. So what would you love right now in your life, Kim? If you could wave a magic wand and say, this is what I would just love right now, what would that look like? I'm gonna give an answer that I think a lot of people can relate to, money. <laughs> and and for, for those of us that are on this, this personal self-development journey, we also know that money is never about just money. Right. So specifically, I think it'd be awesome to have passive income that can help sustain me through, you know, any and all transitions in my life. And I absolutely welcome that. I'm also in the process of, you know, as I've been on this self-love journey of allowing more love in, and I know that the two are connected. So as I'm in this space of continuing to allow more and more love in for me um i know that the money thing is going to take care of itself too so this year for me my word is success what is your word for 2020 bliss yeah <laughs> i love that yeah one step above happiness yes bliss well i wish that for you as well so, thank you you know before i kind of make my way to the end of this wonderful uh chat that we're having I kind of always like to ask, is, is there one thing that you could suggest to the people that are tuning in right now that would help them in some way, just a tool or a skill or something that you use in a day-to-day -day lifestyle that helps your life? I Something that um, absolutely speaks to what our conversation has already been about and anybody who might be dealing with um, learning how to love themselves and have healthier attachments, Again, a lot of times we look to outside people and situations to give us what we need. So what I, my tip is put one hand on your heart, one hand on your abdomen, and what is that thing that you are waiting for someone else to say to you right now? Mm -hmm. Say it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Say it to yourself. Give yourself the gift of that message, of of your own love, of your own support, of maybe it's you're looking for someone to apologize or forgive uh, for some, you know, for ask for forgiveness or, or you know, a, something that you're looking for from them, give that to yourself. 
they may never be able to give what it is that you're looking for. And you do not deserve to wait the rest of your life for them to say it. It's, it's, I think ultimately these types of situations, um, they help teach us how to give to ourselves first versus waiting a lifetime for some, something uh, someone else can give us. Mm. I often tell clients to go to the mirror and just stand there and say, I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am confident. I am enough. And all of these affirmations, when you see yourself looking back at you and you speak these things, you know, in the Bible, it says life and death is in the power of your tongue. What you speak over your life, you bring to your life. So if you speak positive affirmations in a mirror and you hear that come back at you, it's pretty powerful and it's a good tool to use when you're feeling a little bit of lack or as though you're just not really where you want to be in your life. Or maybe like you say, waiting for somebody else to fill your cup, you know, which obviously best off would be for you to fill it yourself first and foremost. So what is the one thing that people who know you even might not know about Kim O'Neill? A lot of people, from my childhood know this, but I've learned a lot of people in my adult life don't ha, didn't know this. So I grew up singing in my 30s. I was in a neo soul funk reggae jazz band. And I just, I love singing and um, being in the band was a fun time in my life. And I'm uh, gonna be incorporating a little bit more song into my world in the near future. So that's something I've learned. People tend to be surprised to find out. I think that's something we have in common. I also have a musical background that's really very interesting. Well, you know what? It's been really interesting just listening and learning so much about you. And as I said at the beginning, you're just a fabulous gal. You really are with such a warm presence. And I love your confidence. I love that you really have that demeanor about you that calls people in and engages them and lets them feel welcome and open to connect with you. So if someone would like to connect with you, hopefully many people will after they see this, how can they reach you? Well, thank you so much again for saying all that, Angel. You know, I, I just want everyone to know that you're on your own journey. We're all on our own journey. And so I want people to know when you're looking at people outside of yourself, Keep in mind, you don't know what they've been through. So don't ever, 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 ever compare yourself to anyone else. You always wanna look at where have you been and where are you today? And then applaud yourself. I know I'm giving I'm giving another away another message that I just, I guess I'm feeling needs to be said right now. Yeah. Um, because I, I know when I look back on my life where in many ways I have always felt a certain sense of confidence and yet there have been times where it's been reflected back to me, Kim, you need to be more confident. And I'm like, what, what are they talking about? And so I can see how my journey has unfolded as I've continued to just stay committed to, to growing and to, you know, stepping into who I'm here to be. And um, so I just want everyone to know, you know, just remember to stay focused on you. And um, there are many rewards and gifts in that. So where they can connect with me is over on KimO'NealCoaching.com. And O'Neill is O-N-E-I-L-L. -L. They can also reach out to me via email, KimO'Neal at Outlook.com. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, and they'll find all those links on my website. So I would welcome a, a hello and anything they'd like to connect with me for. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. I want to thank you also for the work that you're doing right now for Transformation TV. You're a fabulous host. I love being on your show as well. And I have absolutely had a wonderful time just chatting with you. And I hope that we will connect and stay in touch because you're a great gal and you're doing great things in the world. I love that about my guests. They're all doing inspiring, helpful, kind and loving and caring things on the planet. And you're absolutely in that league. So thank you for the work you're doing and for everything you're doing to help all of us who are a part of this wonderful new personal development network. I do thank you on behalf of everyone as well as myself. Thank you. So Angel. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, Kim. Thanks for being here and sending you many, many blessings. So long for now. Bye from New York. Bye.